use Dijkstra's algorithm to find the shortest path between A and C in the graph shown below. So we're trying to start at A and find a path to C using the shortest possible distance in total. Now you could probably do this one with brute force just because it's small enough, but we want to illustrate Dijkstra's algorithm and use it carefully to find the optimal path. So remember, to do this algorithm, we're going to start with A, and it kind of radiates out from there. So starting with A, we're going to visit its neighbors and move outward in sort of concentric rings until we reach C. Now the way this works is we start by putting a distance at each node. So the distance at A is zero because we're starting at A, so the distance to get there is zero. And then everywhere else we put infinity. And this is just an indication that we haven't found the distance there. The distance isn't actually infinity, but at each stage of the process, we want to find a new distance that's lower than the existing one. So if we start with infinity everywhere, we know that every time we start with an initial distance, it'll be lower than that. So it's just a convention to start with infinity everywhere. Now, starting with A, we're going to mark the distance to all of its neighbors. So the neighbors are B, F, and E. And the distance to each of those is just the straight line distance. So from A to B, the distance is 14. So we'll erase the current distance and write 14 instead. Then at F, we'll do the same thing. We can get to F in a distance of 9, and we can get to E with a distance of 7. At that point, we mark A off. So we've taken care of that one, we've checked it. So now for the next stage, select the node that has the shortest distance that we haven't checked yet. So of all the ones we haven't checked yet, E has the shortest distance to it currently of seven. So we'll update its neighbors and see if we can find a shorter path through E that gets to any of its neighbors. So for instance, E can go to F or D. If we went through E to get to F, we would have the seven currently plus the 10 here for a total of 17, which is no better than what we already have. So we're not going to update the distance at F. However, for the distance at D, we could get there by taking the current 7 and adding 15 to it, which gives us 22, which is lower than infinity. So we'll update that with a distance of 22. At this point, we've checked E, and all of its neighbors have been updated if necessary, so we're done with that one. Of the ones that remain, F has the lowest current distance, so we'll update its neighbors. Notice we don't have to check its neighbors on this side because we've already checked them. So all we're going to check is whether either of these paths lead to a shorter distance to either of those existing nodes. So if we come through F and then up to B, we can take the current 9 distance here and add two more to get to B in 11. So it's actually faster to go to B if we go through F than it is to go directly. That's what we found by doing this process. Now the way we've done it is constructed carefully to be an algorithm, to be a very consistent step-by-step -step process, because when you tell a computer how to do it, you have to have a very consistent step-by-step -step way of doing it. So we found now that the best distance to B is 11 by going through F. We can do the same thing here with D, and we can take the current nine and add 11, which gives us 20, which is better than the 22 that's there to begin with. So we can get to D faster if we go through F. Now that we've checked all of F's neighbors, we can check it off and pick the next smallest one. So we look at B. Again, we don't have to worry about going back to A or going to F because we've already checked those. So all we have to do is check this path. We have a current distance of 11 plus nine, which gives us 20. And now we've checked B. So then if we check D real quick, it's already at 20. So if we added six here, we would get 26, which is no better than the 20 we already have. So having checked that one, the optimal distance, the shortest distance from A to C is 20. And that happens if we go through F and B down to C. So the shortest path is A to F to B to C with a length of 20. So that's Dijkstra's algorithm. It's this expanding web that starts at the start point and then expands out in sort of concentric rings 
where you pick the next shortest distance node and update all of its neighbors. And as long as you continue that process, without too much trouble, you'll get the answer relatively quickly.